Okay, let's look at an example because I we can actually solve linear Diophantine equations. There's sort of a slightly ugly way to do it. Um, so consider um, 23x plus 65y equals one, right? That's the equation we had in the previous example. Um, let's apply the Euclidean algorithm to the pair 65 and 23. So apply Euclid to the pair 65, 23. So we get 65 is uh, two times 23. Uh, yeah, I'll say, well, actually I'll say 23 times two. It's 46 plus a remainder of 19. And then 23 is 19 times one plus a remainder of four. 19 is uh, four times four plus a remainder of three. Four is um, three times one plus a remainder of one. And then three is uh, one times three plus zero. Okay, so this is the Euclidean algorithm. This um, this shows that the GCD, that these are, that 65 and 23 are relatively prime. So um, this is the GCD, right? The GCD of 65 and 23. And I'm gonna do something I call back substitution. Um, there are forward ways to do it. I mean, the the forward way is to sort of start i'll just mention the forward way is to start with something like this like subtract this term over to here and now you've have now you have 19 written as a combination of 65s and 23s i mean in a, one way to think about this is we want to write one as a linear combination of 23 and 65 like we want to have some multiple 23s some multiple 65s and get one back so another thing way you can think of is i want to shift forward and backward by 23s and then by 65s like I'm on the number line, I can, I start at, z at zero. I can only jump by 23s and 65s left or right. And I want to somehow land on one. Um, so from this equation, you could get 19. You could isolate 19 in terms of 65 and 23. The fact that you can isolate 19 in terms of those means you could actually, you could do four. I kind of like to go um, this way though. Uh, so one, let's just do, so this is the, this is the back substitution idea. It's a lot to track and so it's a little bit unpleasant, but um, so one I can write as four uh, minus three times one, right? That was from, in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say four times one minus three times one. I'll just say four minus three times one. Okay, so that's from this equation, just isolating for this one, subtract that over, okay. But now we can take this three right here and isolate it in terms of these, so and I'm gonna plug that in for this three right here. So that is four, uh, I'll say four times one, and really plus three times negative one. And I'm gonna, so now I'm gonna, yeah, this is the three I'm actually gonna replace. So this is four times one plus 19 minus four times four times negative one. Okay, so I can now get one as a linear common. So here we had one as a linear combination of threes and fours. Right, and I'm gonna now write it as linear combination of fours and 19s. So that means if we rearrange this, you see how this is kind of <laughs> not that pleasant. Um, so, here is one four and uh, negative four fours. So that's, uh, am I doing this right? <laughs> oh, actually it's positive four fours when I multiply that. So if I kind of see how many fours I have, I have one four there and I actually have positive four fours there. You know what, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna actually write another line out before oh my god another 
line out before I, um, so this is four times one plus 19 times negative one, and then plus four times four really from this minus and that minus. Okay, so that's five fours and one minus one nineteen. So that's so we basically showed one is four times five plus nineteen times negative one. Okay, fun. <laughs> now I can take this four and use this this the next line. So this is the back substitution. I'm going up the Euclidean algorithm. Rewrite that in terms of twenty three and nineteen, right? So this four right here, here we did this three. So four is 23 times one minus 19 times one, all that times five plus 19 times negative one. Okay, and so that is the same thing as 23 times five plus 19. So we have a minus, minus one times five, 19 times negative five plus 19 times negative one. And so if we put those together, we get that one is 23 times five plus 19 times negative six. So I got negative five, negative five here, and negative one there. You can check these, by the way. I mean, this one's clearly 20 minus 19, which is good. This is uh, 105 minus 104 if you work it out. Okay. And now, finally, I can use this 19 up here and rewrite it in terms of these guys and then plug it in there. So, <laughs> so we get 23 times five. But, but I'm saying at this point, we have one now as a linear combination of 23s and 19s. And I want to get it as a linear combination of 23s and 65s because that will solve the equation. All right. So 23 times 5, 19, I'm going to replace with um, 65 minus 23 times 2. And we have negative times that's was the 19 negative six all right let me let me rearrange some things this is 23 times five plus 65 times negative six plus 23 times well this is negative two times negative six that's positive 12. and now when we combine these terms we combine these two terms we have 17 12s, 17 23s. So one is 23 times 17 plus 65 times negative six. Wow, okay. And so that means this is X, uh, this is X and this is Y and those work. That is a solution to 23 X plus 65 Y equals one. It also says that you know, if we reduce this mod um, 65, it says that one is 23 times 17 in Z mod 65 Z. So that 17 is the multiplicative inverse of 23. Okay, so that was, I find this unpleasant. You could see I found it unpleasant. I was going through it. Turns out there's a much slicker algorithm that we can come up with that will generate this answer 17 quite quickly, or at least generate this sort of equation with the 17 and the minus six. And so do that, I need to digress into continued fractions. So we'll do that next. <laughs>